M1 chip, holy cow. What a morning today was. What's going on everyone? Today's video, I guess we're gonna go ahead and discuss about everything that we know about these newer Max. So the Max that got this new silicon chip is the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and the Mac Mini. No 16 inch, unfortunately, maybe next year, very likely. But we're gonna go ahead and discuss the key differences between these three Macs to hopefully help you out if you're in the market to pick up a brand new MacBook. Now, educational discount is available on all three of them. The Mac Mini is $20 less with the educational discount and both the Air and the 13 inch Mac Pro is just giving you $100 off. So basically the important things you gotta know about the new M1 chip. It's the first family silicon chip based on the AMR that Apple is calling it the M1. It's an A core chip that basically is an only one. In other words, GPU, CPU, and the RAM is all put together. Normally these are separate components. The M1 chip, it's just basically it's all in one. The new MacBook Air is the first MacBook that's gonna be making the switch from Intel to the new AMR base Apple Silicon chip. And Apple showed it multiple times on their graph comparing it with last year PC models showing that's two times faster in CPU performance and etc. In other words, it's an overall better performing chip. So with this new M1 chip found inside the new MacBook Air, the key highlights are this. Of course, improved performance, better battery life, and efficiency, and that's basically it. That's all they Apple really amplified. The improved battery life is said to be able to achieve 18 hours under a single charge, can be configured up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and can also be configured with a two terabyte storage capacity. It's still using a nice slick design, but the graphics compared to the previous generation MacBook Air, it's set to be five times faster, which is great for content creating usage. Now, would this be able to edit a 4K 60 FPS video? That's possibly something we gotta test out in the future, but it does have internally a Wi-Fi 6, which is great. So with this bump in performance, the starting price is identical to how the MacBook Air was previously priced at $1,000. And of course, if you're a student, you can pick it up at the student discount price, as we previously talked about. Now the MacBook Mini, this is a one that I personally bought because I'm curious to test it out. It has a starting price of $699. It's said to be three times faster in its CPU performance and six times better in its graphics compared to the previous generation Mac Mini. Unfortunately, it does not come in that cool space gray color option. That would have been dope, but it looks to be almost on par or possibly better performer compared to that more expensive Mac Mini. Again, this wasn't confirmed by Apple, but part of me says it might be slightly better. Now during the unveil of the Mac Mini, Apple did say this is five times faster than most commonly sold PCs on the market. So I really am curious to see what bench scores have to say about this new device. A new key difference between this new generation Mac Mini compared to the old one is, is now the Mac Mini has a neuro engine, which is perfect for high optimized machine learning, excellent for workflow. The Mac mini in the back here, its UI ports does feature two USB-C ports that support Thunderbolt USB 4 type C ports back here, as well as an HDMI 2.0. But besides that, I'm wondering and curious if the Mac mini can still be upgradable because the thing you were always able to do in the past was the Mac mini is upgrade the RAM. Now that said, since this is equipped with an M1 chip, and as Apple stated, that chip basically has everything all together, including the RAM. I'm wondering if there's even separate slots now that you could actually swap the RAM inside the Mac mini. Since the dimensions are still the same, possibly, but during the time of making this video, this is still left unknown, but I did went ahead and reserve mine, and I'm planning on checking that out and see if it's even upgradable. Now, the other machine that also received this M1 chip was the 13 inch MacBook Pro, just the 13 inch, unfortunately. So with that said, the key highlights again, overall performance and longer battery life. So this 13 inch replaced the previous generation X86 models, but retained the same $1,300 starting price for the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now the performance boost on this model is said to be 2.8 times faster compared to the previous generation 13 inch MacBook Pro. And it's marketed to be able to last up to 20 hours. So it's more energy efficient than the MacBook Air surprisingly. The neural engine is also found inside the MacBook Pro. But a new interesting change is that the 13 inch models now receive studio quality microphones. I'm assuming this is gonna be the exact same microphone that's currently found on the 16 inch MacBook Pros. So it's quite nice that we finally received that and see that on the new 13 inch model. 
Pros. However, the only downside to this I notice whenever you're configuring the new 13 inch model is the RAM can only go up to 16 gigs. I'm unsure why. This could possibly be because there's a chance that the new M1 chip may not need that much RAM to begin with. So across all these Macs, the thing you gotta know is they're available right now to be pre-ordered and will begin shipping next week. And for the official release of Big Sur, the next generation Mac OS firmware update, that's gonna become available on Thursday, November 12th. Same release date as the PlayStation 5 actually. But that's basically the quick run up summary of today's event. If you've been holding off on a Mac, if you're into content creating, the 13 inch MacBook Pro might be the right Mac for you. Although I'm definitely curious to see how the new MacBook Air performs. I think if you do a lot of photo photography work, light video editing, MacBook Air may be a good option. But again, we just have to wait until reviewers, journalists get their hands on it so we can actually see that official Geekbench score. And then for the Mac Mini, that's the one I personally reserved. I'm going to take it apart and see what components are upgradable and what aren't. So make sure to stay tuned for that mac mini review but besides that that's basically the quick rundown of everything that we saw so far as of right now everything is just graphs so we just have to wait until we get our hands on one and see what those real graphs mean in real life hey if you made it this far to the end of this video go ahead and watch this video over here that is a video that youtube is suggesting specifically for you so if you enjoyed let me know in the comments if youtube algorithm was correct and then this video over there that's just a recent video that i uploaded so feel free to watch either or again thanks so much for watching take care and i'll catch you all in the next one See ya.